The profit stories, profit stories are amazing, are amazing. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. We like to hear the profit stories, profit stories. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. How are you, children? Alhamdulillah. We are fine. We like to hear profit stories from you. Okay, mashallah, that's very good. Stories of the Prophet are important for all Muslims. Last time we learned the first part of Prophet Musa peace be upon him story. Inshallah, today we will learn about the second part of Prophet Musa peace be upon him story. Are you ready for that? Yes. Okay, let's start. Bismillah. Allah subhanahu wa taala showed many miracles to the evil Pharaoh, yet he kept on torturing the Bani Israel. It was very clear that Pharaoh would never believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala and Prophet Musa peace be upon him. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa taala told Prophet Musa peace be upon him to leave Egypt secretly with his people at night. The children of Israel prepared themselves to leave Egypt and follow Musa and Harun peace be upon them. They did not know where to go at night time, but Allah subhanahu wa taala guided them to the Gulf of Suez because He had a different plan. That event. Was known as Exodus. Pharaoh got the news about the children of Israel. Pharaoh became very angry and sent his people to different cities to gather soldiers to join with him. Pharaoh repeatedly told them, "They are a small group of people. They have made us angry, and we are ready to defeat them." They were ready to catch the children of Israel. But they waited until morning to bring them back into slavery. <laughs> This way, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala removed them from all of their property, the beautiful houses, and gardens. While on the other side, the Bani Israel were waiting the shore of the Gulf of Suez. How many Bani Israel joined with Prophet Musa alayhi wasallam? It was a huge gathering. Some historians say more than twenty thousand Bani Israel joined with him. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows the best. When they heard that Pharaoh and his army were coming to get them, they became scared. Some of them even lost their patience and faith on Prophet Musa peace upon him. They were willing to surrender themselves to the Pharaoh. For the children of Israel, that moment was a test for their faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. In front of them was the Gulf of Suez, and behind them were their enemies, Pharaoh and his strong army. It was a death trap for them. Prophet Musa and Harun peace be upon them did not know. What to do? They were waiting for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's guidance. In that difficult moment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala ordered Prophet Musa peace be upon him to hit the Gulf water with his stick. Then, one of the biggest miracles happened in the time of history. A strong wind blew. The sun became brighter, and the water parted. The Gulf. Stood like the mountains to make a dry path through the sea. Prophet Musa and Harun peace upon them guided the people to cross the water. They were running across the water when they saw Pharaoh and his army were coming from the back. Pharaoh and his army were amazed to see the miracle. However, Pharaoh was still arrogant and wanted to catch them. To encourage his army, he told them. Look, the sea has opened on my command, so that I follow those rebels and arrest them. 
they rushed across the divided water, and when they were midway, a lost of an Arta or ordered the sea to return to its original state. Pharaoh realized his mistake. When he saw there was no hope for his life, he declared, I believe that there is no God except hope the what Israel believe, and I am a Muslim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept his declaration. So the water closed over him and the entire army and killed every single one of them. The big waves threw his dead body to the western gulf shore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Pharaoh's dead body to give lesson to the people, including you and me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Save us from arrogant and give knowledge for the right path. Amin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and kindness saved the children of Israel from the evil Pharaoh. But after being slaves for many years, they were spoiled and ungrateful. On their journey, they saw a group of people doing idol worshipping. Then Israel requested Prophet Musa be upon him. Oh Musa, make a god for us like those gods. So they could worship that idol because they left all of their idols back home in Egypt. Prophet Musa became sad for their request. He tried to convince them not to do idol worshipping because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator and only God. We should only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reminded them how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from the Pharaoh who killed their sons and let their daughters live. They needed true guidance for their life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, they started their long journey to Mount Sinai. Another name is Tur Sinai. It's also called Jabal Musa or Gabal Musa. On the way, they needed water because the land was very dry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Prophet Musa to be upon him to strike a rock with a stick. Suddenly, 12 water fountains came out from that rock. Each of the 12 different tribes of Bani Israel got their own water. Ibn Abbas peace be upon him said it was a special rock which they could carry from place to place. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. It was very hot and dry desert area for walking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent clouds during the daytime to protect them from the sun. After finishing all their supplies, they needed food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a special food for them called manua and salwa. The manna was a type of grain. It was very white and very sweet. Before sunrise, it was spread throughout the land. The children of Israel were only allowed to collect as much as they could eat for one day. They could not save for the next day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his special food at every morning. And Salwa was a small kind of bird like quail. They could catch those birds easily and eat them however they liked it. So could they cook the birds? Yes, they could. Musa peace upon him told them to eat the blessed food, be thankful and worship the one and only God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The children of Israel were a very lucky nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them such special gifts that he did not give any other nation. After a long journey, finally they arrived on the east side of Mount Sinai. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Musa peace be upon him to go to the same place where he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time. At that place, he had to stay and fast for 30 days. Before he left, he requested his brother Prophet Harun peace be upon him to guide those Bani Israel. After 30 days of fasting and praying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala added 10 more days to continue his prayer and fasting. In total, he spent 40 days of fasting and praying. Then he requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he wanted to see him. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Prophet Musa peace be upon him that he did not have the ability to see him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to see some of the nearest mountains. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed a very tiny light of him to the mountain, the mountains were destroyed and turned into dust. Prophet Musa peace be upon him became senseless. So, that dust used as shorma or coal for our eyes? No, that dust is not surma. The sources of surma or coal is some kind of black ismid stone. Surma or coal is the oldest eye cosmetic. Even ancient Egyptians used this kind of eye cosmetic. As you know, using surma or coal is the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, let's come back to the story. After some time when he got his sense back, he prayed and asked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded Prophet Musa peace be upon him that Allah was kind enough to choose him as a prophet and give him a very special gift, which was talking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to be grateful for whatever he got. Then he gave Prophet Musa peace be upon him some written instructions on stones to guide his people. It was part of the holy book Dora, the famous Ten Commandments. On the other side, during his 40 days of absence, very bad things happened to his people. They decided not to carry their stolen gold anymore which they had stolen from the Egyptians before they left Egypt. So everyone put their stolen gold in one place to burn. With them was an evil man named Samiri. He was a good idol maker. With that gold, he made a beautiful and special golden cow. During his work, he did some magical actions to impress the people. There was a hole in the golden cow. So when the wind passed through, it produced a sound. Samiri so convinced the children of Israel that the golden cow was a living god and the god was making sounds. Some of the people forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet Musa peace be upon him. They instantly accepted the golden cow as their god. Prophet Harun peace upon him tried to convince them not to worship the golden cow. At that point, all of the people were divided into three groups. One group had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. Another group accepted the golden cow as their god. And the other group were confused. Prophet Harun peace upon him tried his best to bring everyone in the right path. Some of the ignorant people even threatened to kill him. After 30 days when Prophet Musa didn't come back from the mountain, the people were asking Prophet Harun peace upon him about his brother. They even started to think that Prophet Musa peace upon him died in the mountain. So the golden cow was their only hope. They decided to worship a cow idol as their god? When was the Ten Commandments revealed? It was the same time when he was in Mount Sinai for 40 days and got the written holy stone plates. In the Quran, is there any verse close to the Ten Commandments? Some of the scholars say that in Surah Al-Anam, verse 151 and 152, they include the Ten Commandments of the Torah or the Old Testament. Now, let's come back to the story. After getting the Ten Commandments, when Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, was ready to come to his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him about the golden cow and his people. When he heard they rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepted a golden cow as their god, he became very sad and angry. He immediately came to his people with anger and threw down Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's written tablet. When he saw his brother, Prophet Harun, peace be upon him, he lost his temper. He got a hold of his hair and beard 
and started to drag him into the crowd. Prophet Harun Pilgipan him said he tried his best to unite them together and waited for Prophet Musa Pilgipan him to bring a new guide for them. When he realized it was not his brother's fault, he requested forgiveness from his brother and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he asked Samiri about the golden cow. Samiri tried to convince that he used a special dust to make that cow holy. What kind of special dust did he use? Some scholars say that the dust came from Prophet Musa's feet. Others say it was from the horse's feet that Jibreel peace upon him was riding. And some scholars believe it was just a lie to convince Prophet Musa peace be upon him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Hearing his lame excuse, Prophet Musa cursed him. From that day, no one could come near him and touch him. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! He always shouted to the people until his death. Prophet Musa peace be upon him broke and burned the golden cow into pieces. Then he threw them into the river. When he calmed himself down, he picked up the written tablet because they were a guideline of Bani Israel. Worshipping any idol is a horrible crime. To get pardon from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their crime, he chose 70 leaders of Bani Israel and took them to Mount Sinai. They requested Prophet Musa peace upon him to hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's voice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their request. Big cloud came and covered them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to Prophet Musa peace be upon him, they heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's voice. When the clouds were removed, some of them demanded to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, they would not believe in him. Their ignorant demand made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very angry. Suddenly a thunder came and the electricity from the thunder killed them instantly. Prophet Musa peace be upon him was helpless. He did not know what to do. He requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to kill them because there were good people among Bani Israel. If he returned to his people like that, no one would believe him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his request. All of the 70 leaders got their life back. They all asked forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for their sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a very hard law for Bani Israel. Prophet Musa came to his people and told them to kill each other. To get Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pardon, everyone had to follow his order. That was a horrible moment for Bani Israel. They started to kill their own people. Fathers killed their sons, sons killed their fathers, and brothers killed their brothers. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give such an order? Because they were ungrateful. Every single moment, they were rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet. They crossed the limit by accepting the golden cow as their god when they were still receiving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessed food of manna and salwa, the miracle water in the dry land, and shelter by the cloud. When Prophet Musa and Harun peace upon them saw that horrible moment, they raised their hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive the Bani Israel. Otherwise, the nation of Bani Israel would be destroyed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their prey. To stop the killing, suddenly, everything became dark. Prophet Musa peace upon him announced good news to his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave everyone's sin. Many thousand people were killed in that incident. After that, Prophet Musa and Harun peace upon them started their journey north for their promised land, Palestine. On the journey, Prophet Musa peace upon him tried to teach them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law, which they got at Mount Sinai. They were very lazy to follow the laws. They thought that the laws were very hard to follow. Finally, they rejected the law. We hear you, but we cannot obey you. One more time, 
they made a lot of Nathala upset. He lifted one of the mountains over them to kill them all. They became very afraid. Immediately, everyone prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked pardon. When they all promised to obey the laws, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. After more than one year of journey from Egypt, they reached the area of Faran. In one place, Prophet Musa peace be upon him chose 12 leaders from 12 tribes of Bani Israel and sent them to Palestine to get information about that place. How the Bani Israel had 12 tribes. Prophet Israel, or Yaqub peace be upon him, had 12 sons. Later, each son had his own tribes. The 12 leaders started their journey to Palestine. They saw the people of Palestine were very strong and big. Ten of the leaders became scared, but two of the leaders were very brave. One of the brave leaders was Prophet Yusha, peace be upon him. His English name was Joshua. When the people of Bani Israel heard the news about the strong Palestinians, they refused to go there and fight with them. Prophet Musa told them it was their gifted land by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would be very easy for them to win. Two of the brave leaders also tried to convince them to attack the Palestinians. But the Bani Israel were cowards. They refused to fight with Palestine. They even told Prophet Musa peace be upon him. If the enemy does not leave the town, we will not go there. You and your Lord fight with them and we will be sitting right here. That made Prophet Musa very angry. He cursed his people for their disobedience. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them by not giving their promised land for 40 years. They could not find the way to Palestine. They missed their opportunity. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them many opportunities for a beautiful life. But always they brought bad luck on themselves by rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's orders. They were wandering from place to place. Their hard life started for a long 40 years. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped sending the food, manna and salwa? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very kind and merciful. He did not stop sending the miracle food for them. But after some time, they requested Prophet Musa peace upon him to arrange different kind of foods for them, like they used to get in Egypt. Prophet Musa was surprised and sad to hear that. Then he told them to go to any town to get that kind of food. Assalamu alaikum. The copyright of this product belongs to Ikra Cartoon Network. We are trying to build a unique and very educational Islamic cartoon channel. Please do not copy and upload it to your channel as it will hurt us and it would be haram for you. If you think that we are doing an excellent job for our kids, please join our Dawa project. We really need your help spiritually and financially. Please donate generously. It would be Sadaqa Zaria for you. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you continuous reward even after your death. You can donate by visiting our website, ikracartoon.com. Some scholars say they started to live in a place of Isla or Isla, next to the north side of Aqaba Gulf. Around that time, there was a pious man. He was very poor and honest. He always depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During the time of his death, he requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of his wife, his only son, his home, and a baby cow. Surprisingly, he asked his wife, Take the baby cow to the forest and leave it there because I don't trust my people. They are selfish and greedy. After a few years, the boy grew up. His mother told him, Your father has left a baby cow in the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It must have grown into a cow by now. The son was surprised and asked, 
Where is it? She advised him to be like his father. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then go look for it. With a rope, he went to the forest and prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he raised his head, he saw a beautiful yellow cow was coming towards him. He was very happy and took the cow with him. No one could come near it except the young man and his mom. He used to sell wood for his living. During that time, a wealthy man died and did not have any children, only a bad nephew. To get his uncle's property quickly, he killed his uncle. Then, dropped his dead body in front of someone's door and tried to blame him for his uncle's death. Two groups blamed each other and was ready to fight. Finally, they decided to go to Prophet Musa peace be upon him to solve their problem. Musa peace be upon him told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order to sacrifice a cow then touch the dead man's body with a piece of the cow's meat. The dead man would get his life back and tell the killer's name. Everyone laughed when they heard this. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose a cow to solve the problem? To test them, because in their heart they still believed that the cow was a god. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew it would not be easy for them to kill a cow to solve their problem. At that point, if they just sacrificed any cow, problems would be solved easily. But they made it complicated. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it even more complicated for them. They tried to ask Prophet Musa peace upon him too much questions about the type of cow they should slaughter. They said, Ask your Lord to tell us clearly about the cow. Prophet Musa peace upon him told them it should not be too old nor too young. That answer could not satisfy them. Ask your Lord to tell us about the color of that cow. Prophet Musa told them it had to be pleasant and bright yellow cow. But they made it even more complicated. Call your Lord to make clear about the cow. Because all the cow looks same to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them such a cow that it would be hard to find. That type of cow was never used in any kind of farming, but it was a very healthy and fault-free cow. Finally, they found that it matched only with the cow of the fatherless boy. They wanted to buy that cow, but the boy and his mom did not want to sell the cow. Finally, they agreed and asked for the same weight of the gold as the cow was. Bunny Israel did not have any choice. So, they bought the cow, but their hearts did not allow them to sacrifice the beautiful yellow cow. Finally, they followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. The dead man woke up and told his killer's name. Prophet Musa peace be upon him ordered the crowd to kill that killer. From now on, I will not ask too much question to complicate the situation. MashaAllah! That is the lesson from this story. If my parents say something to do, I will do it right away. I will not ask any question to my parents. Inshallah. Inshallah, I'll tell you another very good story. Some scholars say the location of that story was in the town of Ailat or Ayla, which was next to the north side of the Aqaba Gulf Shore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Friday for their worship day, but the children of Israel chose Saturday for their day of worship. Worship day means their holy day. At that day, they were not allowed to do any kind of work, even hunting or fishing, from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. It was called Sabbath. To test their heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send lots and lots of fishes to the shore on Saturday. The fishes played in the shore openly. But in the other day, fishes did not come to the shore at all. It was very hard to catch fish for them. After some time, one of the Bani Israel figured out an evil plan to catch the fish. 
On Friday, he dug a hole in the shore. He put some tree branches in it and covered part of the hole with a net. It was a trap for the fish. On Saturday, some of the fishes fell into the trap. On Sunday, he collected the fishes from that trap. To follow him day by day, more people started to use that kind of trap for the fishes. When good people asked them why they were breaking Sabbath or the Saturday law, they replied to them. We don't catch the fishes on Saturday. On Sunday, we catch the fishes. All the people were divided into three groups. One was a good group and they did not catch the fishes. They also told others not to catch the fish because their evil act might bring punishment to Bani Israel. Another group was an evil group and they openly broke the law. And the third group was that they did not catch the fishes, but they did not tell the others not to break Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. Prophet Musa peace be upon him warned them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. One day, he told the good people to get out of the town and stay outside of the town wall and close the town gate. The next day when the good people woke up, they did not hear any noise inside of the town. They climbed the wall and were surprised to see the bad people's condition. Every one of them became a monkey with a tail. It was a horrible moment for everyone. Some scholars say they became monkeys for three days, then everyone died after that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Astaghfirullah. I will not use any tricks to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law. Most of the children of Israel did not follow Musa alayhi wa sallam's order. Yes, they always gave him a hard time. They even spread a rumor about Prophet Musa peace be upon him. He always used to dress with long clothing to cover his full body. People never saw him without his clothes. So some of the evil men spread that Prophet Musa peace be upon him had a very bad skin disease. They even spread rumors about his private parts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a plan. One day, Prophet Musa peace be upon him was taking a bath behind a rock. He put all of his clothes on top of that rock. After he finished his bath, he tried to take his clothes, but the miracle happened. The rock started to run with his clothes. He started to run to get his clothes back. Finally, the rock took him into the crowded area, where there were many Bani Israel who saw them in that condition. They saw him as a perfect man. Then, he quickly took his clothes and hit that rock with a stick. In this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from the evil rumors. Did he have any kids? From the Quran and Hadith, we cannot confirm about his children. Some historians say Prophet Musa had two sons, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. When their 40 years were almost finished, most of the Bani Israel who came to Egypt died. Their children grew up. Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission to start their journey to their promised land. At that time, Prophet Musa and Harun peace upon them were very old. After many years of preaching to the people, Prophet Harun peace upon him died at the journey near Mount Hor before reaching the promised land, Palestine. Some of the scholars believed that he was buried on top of Mount Hor, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. After losing his brother, Prophet Musa peace upon him took his people and took full control of the Moab area. Then, the merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a chance to forgive their sin. He ordered Prophet Musa peace be upon him to enter with his people to the beautiful city. Some scholars say that that city might be Sittim, which was on the eastern side of Jordan, opposite to Jericho. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to go to that city and enjoy different kind of foods from there. When they entered the city, they should lower their heads 
and ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Hittatun Hittatun. They also had to be very kind and gentle and grateful to their Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know what Bani Israel did? What? Did they make a mistake again? Yes, they did what they always did. Bani Israel again made a mistake. They entered the city with pride and did not lower their heads. They did not say, Hittatun Hittatun. They changed the words to Habbatun Habbatun. They were not kind and gentle at all. This time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them with a disease which was like a plague. Almost 14,000 people died from this punishment. After a few days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel of death to Prophet Musa peace upon him to take his life. When Prophet Musa peace be upon him saw the angel of death, he slapped him in the eye. The angel returned to his lord and said the Prophet Musa did not want to die. As a respect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered him to put his hand in the back of an ox. And for every hair that would come in his hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant him that many years of life for him. Prophet Musa said that what would happen after that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied that he had to die after that. He did not want to extend his life. He welcomed the death to him and requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take his life close to the promised land. The merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his last request. He died close to the promised land at Mount Nibel. His grave is below the red sand hill close to Palestine. This is the end of our story of our great prophet Musa peace be upon him. Inshallah, next time, we will enjoy another beautiful story of the Prophet. The Prophet Story